Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Jason Tucker, and this is WP Water Cooler, episode number 212. Today's topic is how to start with WooCommerce. Let's go around the room real quick, get everyone introduced. We go in alphabetic order. Bob, tell us about yourself. Yeah. Bob, okay. Um, I'm Bob Dunn, uh, do a lot of blogging. I'm the co-organizer of the WooCommerce Seattle Meetup, and I do a little podcast called the WPE Commerce Show. Nice. Thanks for being on. Appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks. Bobby, how about you? I'm the other Bob. Oh, what is <laughs> who's Raven? Who is that? This is Patrick. <laughs> so I'm I'm Bobby Wilson. I'm a WordPress developer, WooCommerce developer, like a lot lately. Um, and I'm happy to be on the show. Hi. Awesome. Thanks for being on. Patrick, if the mariachi band will be quiet for a minute, uh, tell us about yourself. <laughs> uh, well, I'll try to keep them quiet. Um, so my name is Patrick Rolland. Uh, so I've led a couple of WooCommerce releases. I was on the WooCommerce dev team for a bit. Uh, I now create courses on e-commerce on ninja.com, and I'm involved in meetups and WordCamp Denver and a whole bunch of things. So He's awesome. sort of a big deal. Sort of a big deal. The deal is significant. <laughs> <laughs> Russ, what about you? Uh, what's up? I'm Russ. Uh, I run lots of stuff in uh, Las Vegas, especially around WooCommerce. Um, I work at Web Dev Studios and I do support with Maintain. And we have seen a lot of WooCommerce stuff in the last uh, 72 hours that have been crazy. And I'm glad to be on the show with Bob WP. Um, I read this stuff all the time, and uh, I, I'm a big fan. First time caller, long time listener. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> How about you, Sarah? Hi, I'm Sarah Wheatfeld. I'm the production manager at Deke Interactive, and I facilitate the OC WordPress design meetup first Monday of each month. Um, but we won't be meeting in December, so see you guys in January. Suckers. Awesome. <laughs> Steve, what about you? I am Steve Zengit. I am the founder of Zeke Interactive, and I host the OC WordPress meetup. We'll be having our last meetup next Monday. Uh, I'm sorry, last meetup of the year next Monday. Nice. I'm Jason Tucker. You can find me over at jasontucker.us. And I just started a meetup. My meetup is starting tonight, and it's Ooh. over in uh, in Whittier, California. So if you're in Whittier, California, and you want to drive about 15 miles in any direction from a freeway, that's where we're at in Whittier. <laughs> What's your meetup about, Jason Tucker? Uh, it's about WordPress. Oh, okay. I thought it was going to be yep. cool. Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> Man! <laughs> Uh, that's maintain, right? Maintain is the is, is the company we're for, right? All right. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> so let, let's talk a little bit about about <laughs> WooCommerce. Like, what is WooCommerce? What, who who wants to who wants to take on the topic of like just a couple minutes of what what is WooCommerce? Wikipedia, Steve, go. <laughs> Do we? I don't want to think we went that today. Oh, I'll I'll jump in. I mean, who, who, sure, oh, go. Yeah. No, go for it, Patrick. Cool. So like, I mean, WooCommerce is like. Um, it's an e-commerce plugin for WordPress. So if you want to sell anything on your WordPress site, you can install WooCommerce. Uh, you can add products. You can add shipping rates. You can take payment online. Uh, and then you can manage your orders. So it's all the bare basics you need to run an e-commerce store. On top of WordPress. Yes. How much, how much does WooCommerce cost? So I mean, the core plugin is free. Um, and then thank you for pointing that out uh, and then there's uh, there are like a whole bunch of extensions for like advanced functionality like subscriptions and memberships uh, but all the core stuff is free very cool so that's you know the, the thing is people install WooCommerce and they're like yeah the, it just starts working right and you're like mm, no there's more stuff you got to do other than just install WooCommerce and hit the go button right well what, what I think one of the conversations that you should always start with is is WooCommerce the best fit for me? Um, you know, like if you if you're not selling tangible products or if you're only selling in specific states or whatever, maybe WooCommerce is not the best fit for you. Um, I think that conversation always needs to happen whether you're going to sell things online or not. You know, like is this the best fit for me? Instead thanks of like, for, well, like uh, thanks for co thanks for completely killing the podcast, Russ. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you well, totally killed the mojo. I mean, and to that, I would say that even if you are selling non-tangible products, WooCommerce is still yes. a very strong potential solution. There are other solutions out there, of course. However, uh, I don't I, I don't think you know the, that that's a, a criteria that necessarily disqualifies WooCommerce. I wasn't. I wasn't trying to dis 
disqualify. All I'm saying is like is your it, house on fire. I think is Russ is on actually, fire. I, I'm, I'm, I was just giving Russ a little bit of uh, crap, but I think Russ's point is valid, right? Right. Root commerce is a complex system, right? If you're just if you're just taking a simple payment for something, there are other plugins that do that, right? So. So yes, let's just assume for the sake of this podcast, though, that you've already determined that WooCommerce is for you. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I think that um, I was just going to add that I think that's true in one sense, but also WooCommerce is great for the flexibility. And I think that's a lot of times at the beginning what I've asked people, what is the flexibility you may need two months, six months, a year down the road? You may not know it right now, but I've been using it since 2011. I can tell you I've sold just about everything using it, and that's why I started with it. So so it's it's incredibly flexible, but yeah, there is a learning curve. Yep. I think the learning curve right now is a lot smaller. Like they've made some really great improvements. Like you don't have like these weird shipping rules you have to deal with anymore. The shipping's a little more straight line, you know, streamlined and um, you know, now they have the walkthrough setup when you first install it, which is just amazing. So you can start going and making your settings. You don't have to figure out where those are. You can set dollars, all that stuff. So they've actually improved it a lot on usability. Well, and, and to that point, I think they've made it a lot easier to connect with like payment gateways. You know, like you used to have to go in and like go into PayPal and check this box and make sure that it's sending this data back and blah, blah, blah. And now it's just kind of install it give it a little bit of information and it sets up the rest. I mean, especially with Stripe, um, with as complicated as Stripe could be, the WooCommerce has made Stripe, connecting to Stripe a lot simpler. So let's say you just install WooCommerce out of the box. What do we need to do to get up and, and going with WooCommerce? How much time do you have? Uh, <laughs> 23 minutes. <laughs> I, I, what I do a lot of times, and since I use, I work with so many beginners and DIYers, is I know this is a plug, but I say, hey, you need to understand the basics of it. Go somewhere, WP101, great startup series on it. Even, you know, just an idea as long as they understand the concept of WordPress first. Makes perfect sense. Uh, having having some good resources for people to look at to you know find the stuff. I mean, Bob, you even you you make an entire podcast just devoted to WooCommerce, right? Yeah, yeah. That's how my podcast started. Was it was do the Woo? I've kind of expanded out to other you know WordPress stuff, but right. it still is heavy on the WooCommerce stuff. All right, so we've plugged WP one hundred and one. I'm going to go back yeah. and make my question even more of a softball, <laughs> right? I've installed Sarcastic WooCommerce. Softball. <laughs> I've, I've installed WooCommerce. I know that one of the first things it does is it asks you to it, it runs through the setup process for you. So and and I think I haven't done it in a while, but the first one of the first setup pieces is setting up the pages that are necessary for WooCommerce, right? So what are some of those pages that WooCommerce needs to operate? So you, you, you need to set up the, uh, the shop page, which will show all your products. You need to set up, set up um, your account page, which lets people see um, what their transaction history or purchase payments or update their passwords. Uh, and then the, the other big one is setting up the cart, and that way people can see what they've added from their shop before they purchase and stuff like that. Yeah. Can I jump in here? So this yeah, isn't... No. This, this isn't this isn't something you need to worry about. The new welcome wizard just says install pages. Nice. The first just, setup is it's a blue button and it says install pages and you go to the next step. And, and it, just, like, it lists yeah. them, right? But like, it's like, oh, cool. Now I know there's going to be a My Account page. Done. Great. Somebody finally took my softball. I appreciate that. So, <laughs> so what, what happens is, and just, I just want to be clear for the non-technical that are, that are watching, is as Patrick just explained, that is actually going to set up pages within your pages tab, right, that weren't there before you ran the setup wizard. I just want everybody to be aware of that. So those pages are to remain in place. Like, like what Russ was saying, things like shop, my account, cart, right? Those pages need to be there because WooCommerce needs pages that it can use for its system to walk people through the process of, of purchasing. Yeah, and people need to out. yeah. Sorry. And I, people need to understand once they've created those pages, when they go up in and open them up, they're obviously, you know, either short code or blank. So right. they, you know, they're ready to go. I just don't want anybody to be alarmed when they see those pages and don't delete them. 
right? They need they need to be there. They need to be in place. A deleted checkout. Why aren't um, anybody buying anything from me? I don't and, know. <laughs> and I, I may or may not be speaking from experience, not my own, but my clients. Uh, you know, people that have gone in and deleted some of those pages, and then have complained that their store is not working. Yeah, and now they have a great function or feature. I think it's I can't remember if it's in the tools or whatever where you can go in if you accidentally or did do that, you can go in and restore all those pages yeah. with another one click, which is nice. Yeah. Right. There's so also on the system a feature. status. Yeah, in the system status will be like, oh by the way, you deleted your shop page and it's like in red letters. Okay. So we're we are we're skipping around a little bit, but let's talk about that what, what that system status page is. Go. Um, so, so <laughs> it's frightening to most people. It's okay. This is just um, it's just the page that lists everything about your system. I, I, I don't think that's like crucial for anything. No. Nope. Only there when you if something ever goes wrong, it just says, "Hey, a plugin's out of date, or a theme's out of date, or your theme's doing something weird with templates." But I, I mean, I wouldn't. I don't think a beginner needs to know that until something goes, and unless something goes wrong. Totally get it. Okay, Bobby, what were you gonna say? I think I was heading down the same path, so go ahead. <laughs> okay. Since I oh, see. Oh, I remember. Yeah, I remember. Go ahead. I remember now. So also in the dashboard, in, in the settings of WooCommerce, if you actually ever delete your shop page or your cart page, or you can go in and you can actually set another page to be that. So if you already have some other pages, and you're like, oh my god, I don't know what I did, you can quickly set those over. So you know you can kind of get the functionality back and figure out what's going on. Great. Right. So what, what if you already have like a list of products that are ready to go? I know you can just go in there like a blog post and just put in those things one at a time. But let's say that I'm already an established business. I already have a bunch of products. I know how much I'm selling them for. I know a good description for them. I have a title for them. I have all that stuff. How do I take that list that I put in Excel or Google Sheets or whatever and then just plop it into, uh, into WooCommerce? If only there was a plugin that could import all things into WP. <laughs> Which plugin would that be, Sarah? I don't know. It, could, it could be WP all import. Dot 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 import well. Because <laughs> because sometimes you import things and uh, you're you're missing a a comma or you're forgetting something and it it goes awry. Uh, the um, one I use most just to make sure that it's all compatible. If I'm importing stuff from somewhere else, I definitely make sure I get the WooCommerce uh, CSV import suite. Oh, okay. Um, where uh, is that? Is that a plugin? Is that just a? That's an extension from WooCommerce. Oh, cool. Yeah, well, yeah, it's pretty cool. awesome. They also have one for customers and one for orders. So if you're moving from, let's say, like what I did this weekend from WP eCommerce over into WooCommerce, you can move all that stuff over. Um, and there's great guides. There's lots of documentation on that. Probably not something a beginner would look into. Oh yeah, and coupons. Thanks, Patrick. <laughs> So that's the, that's the product CSV import suite? Yes. Well, actually, awesome. it's just a CSV import suite, so it's pretty awesome. Gotcha. Update the notes. <laughs> so let's, so <laughs> I've gone through, I've gone through all the setup, right? I've got everything, I've, I've, I've got everything in place. Uh, I think Jason may have skipped a step. He said, you know, I'm bringing products in from another store, but let's say I'm starting from scratch, right? Where do I go next? Setting up a product? Yeah. That depends on what you're doing. Like, if you're selling tangible products, I think the next thing that you would go to after you like you're done with your setup, and this isn't part of the the walkthrough, is is starting setting up your shipping. Like, you need to know: Am I going to be needing a like a UPS or a FedEx connector, or can I just start setting up these flat rates? So, I would think if I'm selling tangible products, the next place I would go would be to set up all my shipping rules for all my items. Okay. I mean, I'm, and then I would go in and start putting those items in. I was going to say that I would start looking into like what states I'm going to sell into and start looking at like state taxes and, and see what it's actually going to cost per product per page, stuff like that. Like the, that's usually one of the things where most WordPress support comes from uh, or, or a lot of WooCommerce support comes from I, I'm trying to sell this and the, the state tax is messed up or my totals are wrong. So I'm walking, I'm actually walking through the WooCommerce setup wizard here on, 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 a, on a browser while we're talking about this. So we went through page setup. The next one, next step is store locale, right? So you choose where in the world your store is located, right? Which affects a lot of things like shipping and um, tax rates and things like that. The next step after that is shipping and, and tax. You, you just tell the WooCommerce wizard 
will the these products be shippable? Are they are they shipping? Are the products that I would ship physically ship? And, and will I be charging state sales tax? And if you don't want to deal with tax and you just don't even want to think about it, uh, there is a plugin that you can use from TaxJar, which is at taxjar.com, and it handles everything for you. Especially if you do a lot of, if, if you're based in California and you do a lot of business in California, it can get very complicated very fast because you've got LA city tax, you've got state tax, and all this other stuff. So if you don't want to deal with it, TaxJar will handle it for you. Yeah, awesome. I think yeah, I think, Steve, one of the things I've found, especially with dealing with most of these people that are in the exact same spot as you, is a problem with e-commerce is there's so many freaking variables. And that well, next that's, step that's is, that. yeah, that next step is a tough one because it's like, depending on this, there's no silver bullet. So some people may choose to attack one part one way they may go into products because they're doing a simple download or maybe they're doing affiliates, all this stuff throws in. So it's really, it is, it's a tough one to really for every individual to say, you know, step one, step two, because after you've gone through Ooh, that basic stuff, you know, it's, you can go off in a billion different directions. Yeah. So, so I, but I think we're going deep instead of wide. Like yep. I, I think for a new user, you should do a little bit of everything. So just go through the welcome mm -hmm. wizard. It'll do flat rate shipping, which is simple. That's what you should start with. It'll do the basic taxes. Start with that, create your first product and start with that. And then you may go, Oh, I want a variable product where you want to sell t-shirts with different sizes. And I, I think as a first time store owner, you don't know what you don't know, right? You don't know about shipping and taxes and, you just need to set up your basic store first and then realize what if you need to add anything. I think that's, you just have to start simple because e-commerce is so massive. You have to I, start simple. I think a step that we forgot to mention is before um, before you do this, you should enable the, the button that says this store is not going to, um, uh, it puts up a thing that like, like this is a building process it says like nothing will be sold. Like if you check out, we're not going to fulfill your shipment. Like if, if you're building and it's going to take you a while to put all your products and do all this, you need to enable that little thing at the top that says like, this is like uh, test mode or something like that. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, I forget what the button is, but that so, way, because if you're doing it on a live site, which you shouldn't be, but if you're doing this on a live site and someone clicks your site, they go and purchase something and you know, you're not even set up yet. I think that's one of the things that you need to enable. Before <laughs> hey, you're ready to no, 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 no. If somebody wants to give me money at, before I've set something up, that that's on them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. So the last step in the, just to get, finish out the wizard, the last step in the wizard is payments, right? So what kind of payments am I going to take? And it, and WooCommerce ships with, a couple of built in, right? And then there's other ones you can add later on. Okay. One of our favorites, Stripe is built in, right? Correct. Stripe. Yeah. Stripe. PayPal, Stripe are built in, as is uh, check payments, uh, bank transfers, or COD. Nice. Well, Stripe's in there. That's good. COD is the name of my favorite band. <laughs> and so the. <laughs> And so the, the last step in the process is is I can either go on to uh, go right back into my dashboard or it gives me an action item, create my first product, which is where I think you should start. I'm with Patrick on this one. Just go do, go start playing around because you want to get you're gonna want to get familiar with what's in that product data meta box, right? Sure. All right, people, we got another 11 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure that we all know so, that uh, everyone so, on this panel here is uh, 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 that we're Yeah, <laughs> Maybe we can talk about things that you so, do after. Bob, like, Bob runs a podcast, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm going to have you on, Steve. <laughs> so, so let's say you, uh, you say you have everything set up. Now what? How do you, how do, you do this? So, so I think the biggest challenge for store owners is not WooCommerce, but is like marketing and getting people to your site. Um, and I think, you, I mean, this is going out of the technology a little bit, but you need to have at least one really solid way of getting people to your site. And that could be sharing stuff on social, in which case you want to add some social sharing plugins. It could be doing some SEO stuff, in which case you want an SEO plugin for WooCommerce. Um, but I, I think you need, the, I think the hardest part for a store owner is not the technology. It's getting people to your site and then retaining them. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I agree. You know, they get, they really get um, bogged down in the technology. And often that's why a lot of people I talk to, 
I end up getting them some help, you know, have somebody come in and help you set up some of this stuff because especially, you know, although some of the stuff is simpler with taxes and shipping now, that's where they really get, they just get buried in that and they're, they've gone down quick and they don't, they lose that perspective of, okay, I got to actually start thinking how to get people here. I'm so involved with the tech part of things that now I've lost sight of that. And yeah, it's, it's, it can be a it can be a challenge, especially for the do it yourself or So is is social sharing any different on as a blog post as it is to being able to social share stuff um, through WooCommerce? Like, is there a plugin that somebody should be looking at for it? Is there a couple one liners? What, what what do I do to kind of make that happen? So so there's a couple differences. Like, um, I mean, so you can share it just like a blog post, which is fine, right? Uh, but you may want to like, especially with like Pinterest, you want to give people rich pins which gives Pinterest more metadata that it can use to classify and do stuff with your pin. Um, same thing with Twitter. You can do fancy Twitter card, product cards. Um, so if you can find a social sharing plugin for WooCommerce, that's good. But Jetpack has pretty decent, it's, it's, okay, it's a good place to start um, because it just has the Facebook, Twitter, whatever uh, button you need. A lot, yeah, of, the, so a lot of clients we set up actually uh, set up with Publicize from Jetpack just that way. Uh, once they get their draft set up and they're ready to go, the, uh, maybe they're using a little bit of Yoast SEO, just the free version. They set up their default image, their little meta description, and hit publish. And then you know we set that up to share to Facebook and Twitter and all that. And I mean that's usually the easiest way to get started. Um, but down the road, when you want to create more sales, I think you're going to have to take alternative routes. Yeah, there's some social sharing plugins in that out there that will do custom Pinterest pins for just your specific products, which is huge for e-commerce. And Pinterest is probably one of the bigger ones for e-commerce. So I'm, I'm surprised that's not a, a bigger part of Yoast SEO. You know, like like uh, when you set up the OG descriptions or when you set up like the the Facebook graph. I'm surprised there isn't a, a, another feature for Pinterest, seeing how. A lot of people have like uh, food blogs, so they have fashion blogs, and they're going to be pinning stuff. Yeah. And just yeah. so just so we're clear to our audience, OG stands for Open Graph. <laughs> it, it, yeah, you skipped over it very fast. It, it's not Steve saying it where he's the original gangster. No, 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 no. <laughs> Um, and the one thing I want to mention, we, we've 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 talked about it very quickly uh, a couple times during this podcast, but the the WooCommerce uh, ecosystem is very large, right? So you you I'm with everybody that's that's recommended that you start basic. But one of the nice things I uh, I like about WooCommerce, especially for my clients, is pretty much anything you can dream up that you would do inside of an uh, of a uh, an e-commerce solution. WooCommerce has a solution for it, right? So it's usually just a plug-in purchase away to add some new feature onto your mm -hmm. store that you that you're thinking of. Not all plugins are created equally, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So some are some are some are better than others. And so you you, you do want to read the reviews and and uh, see what other people have done. But but for the most part, I haven't found much that you can't do with an existing plugin that you purchase yep. from the WooCommerce store. Yeah. So can I add one thing to that, Steve? So like yep. internally, uh, when we are building WooCommerce and like deciding what features go in, what features don't, there is like a line that one of the, someone on the marketing team came up with and it was like, WooCommerce allows you to build a store that's as unique as your brand. And I think that's like, that is like the key selling proposition of WooCommerce is that you can make it do anything. You can start simple and then you can, if you want to have a monthly subscription box so they can pick the different flavor of granola bar, like 12 different bars, you can do that. Oh, you just gave away my business idea. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I've even seen solutions where um, there's been people who have multiple houses and they rent out these houses. And so they've set up um, a subscription using WooCommerce. That way the person goes in, they put their credit card and they're being billed monthly like with their, uh, with, with their rent. And I mean, that's something that you don't have a store, but you can use WooCommerce in another dimension other than just selling things. You know, you can use it for subscriptions or you can use it to um, to keep people informed. I think that's a, a great variable that WooCommerce uh, doesn't get enough credit for. You know, yeah. there's there's many avenues that you can use uh, WooCommerce for. Yeah, I've, I've used it from everything. I was just going to say I used it from you know, download books to products to booking coaching to selling a workshop tickets to memberships to 
I, I've used it in just about every possible way. And I've found some creative ways to use it too. To some of the booking, I have people, the sponsors that I have for my podcast, I use a booking plugin where they can book specific slots and stuff. So it's, yeah, it's incredibly flexible. And that's why it stayed in the back end. One of the very first things that I ever used WooCommerce for was I wanted to have my own um, custom login widget. Like I didn't want to redirect people to WP Admin. So I created a page called Login and I put the WooCommerce shortcode to, to log in. And I was using WooCommerce just for that. I, just for that purpose alone. I mean, it, it's probably not advised at this point. But You're I mean, a freak. Like, like, <laughs> but, but I mean, that was the early days of, of WooCommerce when it, when it was first forked, you know. I, I was using it just for um, that functionality. Just another oh. great example of I just finished up a site probably a couple of months ago that's Netflix style, and they sell memberships and credits to view videos, and it's built on top of WooCommerce. So there's really not much that is not within its power awesome power so <laughs> i i think one of the things that we definitely should talk about is the documentation that comes with woocommerce i mean it, it it's pretty cut and dry when it comes to this is the error you're getting here's how you fix it to hey i want to do this how do i implement this new functionality i mean it, it's very well documented in the sense that I'm trying to do this. Someone's created a way to do that, and they've clearly documented like the steps needed. Yeah, it looks like there's a lot of stuff in there, especially when it comes to extensions. And and one of my favorite documentation pieces is actually on hosting, because you know not all hosts are created equally, and some hosts um, don't like to they don't like the shopping cart put in the header. You know, like like they don't like it. Like when you add a cart, it adds automatically you have to set that up on wp engine sometimes i mean that documentation like why things go wrong is is super well oriented when it comes to the documentation yeah and developer docs too um uh, there's some great developer docs that are in there as well and um, all those links will be in the show notes so you guys can go take a look at those. I mean, that's usually one of the first places I look when somebody comes and asks for support. It's like, hey, this isn't happening. Let's see if somebody else has already, you know, solved this problem. And nine out of ten times the docs has something that says, oh, you're not passing this right parameter or your short code's broken or, you know, like you, you simply just need to clear the cache, you know. What happens that that's other one time What that one out of ten time? Uh, it usually, it usually says, oh, Steve broke it. Oh, okay, that's fair. <laughs> um, speaking of documentation and just getting general help and troubleshooting, that's where like the system status really comes in nicely. Because you can go to that page, and they've extended it a lot, where it shows you now like if your server doesn't meet certain recommendations, or you need a certain, um, or if your theme files are out of date, because sometimes that just happens. Um, and even sometimes, like, It'll tell you right away if a plugin is colliding, and then that's really awesome. I mean, I, I think that's uh, a, a subject on its own is just it, putting the WooCommerce templates into your theme. I think that's that's something. That's a that whole is, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it can get complicated quick, or things can go awry just by updating. I think that's a whole show. Well, well, while we're talking about complications, uh, I just wanted to go back. Like, I think I think Steve, when you're saying if something goes wrong. If you have a paid extension, you can talk to WooCommerce. Even if you don't, you can talk to WooCommerce. It'll just take longer. <laughs> mm. <laughs> You're building usually, business, right? Like you want to have, you want to have help. Yeah. Well, and and one of the things I was going to mention very quickly from a developer standpoint is WooCommerce itself uh, comes with all the templates, all the all the templates that are that make up WooCommerce. So those cart shop account pages those are all included in the plugin so as a theme developer you can bring those into your theme and customize those uh, to match your theme if you need lots and lots of functions but you need to keep up with the versions <laughs> that's true keep as with any as with any plugin make sure you, you stay updated and stuff Folks, that's about it for today. Thank you very much for being on the show. Make sure you check out all of the links in the show notes and all of the different uh, podcast shows, websites, and everything else that everyone does here regarding WooCommerce. Um, we don't talk about WooCommerce enough, and it's it's mainly because we have some really great other podcasts that are out there that definitely focus just on WooCommerce. So thank you all for being on the show today and talking about it. We really appreciate it. 
If you like the show, hit the little uh, thumbs up button. And Happy Thanksgiving. If you enjoyed this, hit the subscribe button. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. See you guys.